Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about different types of triangles. Okay, so I've got several different types of triangles to discuss with you, um, and you need this information in order to proceed with the proofs and also with some analysis. It's more algebraic and numeric in um, more in their context. Okay, so a scalene triangle. A scalene triangle is a triangle in which no two sides are congruent. So you can see in the example uh, under the scalene triangle, the figure, I have a triangle with a length of four, a length of seven, and a length of nine. And none of those sides are congruent. So this is a scalene triangle. Second type is an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is a triangle in which at least, at least two sides are congruent. So an isosceles triangle has at least two sides. All isosceles triangles have at least two sides, and some of the isosceles triangles, therefore, are also going to be equilateral triangles. Now, if I have an equilateral triangle, then all equilateral triangles are going to be isosceles triangles. So in this case, it works uh, in two directions. In this direction, if I have an isosceles triangle, it's sometimes an equilateral triangle because we don't know what this third side is. But in this case, I know that an equilateral triangle is always isosceles because it has at least two sides um, that are congruent. So an isosceles triangle is sometimes a, an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle is always going to be an isosceles triangle. Right, an acute triangle is a triangle in which no angle exceeds 90 degrees. Um, so that means that all angles have to be less than 90 degrees. No angle can be equal to 90 degrees. So I have a, an acute triangle here, 60, 55, and 65 degrees. And it just so happens in an equilateral triangle or an equiangular triangle, all the angles are going to be 60 degrees. So an equiangular triangle is also an acute triangle. An obtuse triangle is a triangle in which one angle exceeds, only one angle exceeds 90 degrees. In this case, I have my uh, angle, which is 120 degrees, that exceeds 90. So this is an obtuse triangle. Now, I cannot have an obtuse triangle with two angles that exceed 90 degrees because we know that the sum of all the angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. If I had two angles that exceeded 90 degrees, I would have a triangle uh, in which the sum of the angles exceeds 180 degrees. So in an obtuse triangle, and in any triangle for that matter, you can only have one angle that exceeds 90 degrees. Okay, next pair of uh, triangles. I have an equilateral triangle, and an equilateral triangle is a triangle in which all sides are congruent. So in this case, you see all sides congruent, marked by the one tick mark. And an equiangular triangle is a triangle in which all angles are congruent. And it just so happens that if I have an equilateral triangle or an equiangular triangle, then I have the other one. So e all equiangular triangles are equilateral triangles. And all I can't remember which way I said that. All equiangular triangles are equilateral triangles, and all equilateral triangles are also equiangular triangles. Right, we also know that uh, right triangles are triangles in which one of the angles is a right angle. So here's my right angle. And in a right triangle, I have a length that's called the hypotenuse. And that length, or that side, is the side that's opposite the right angle. So if I draw my line from the angle to the opposite side, uh, so a side that's not adjacent to the angle, then that's the hypotenuse. And then I have two legs, and those legs are adjacent or they're associated with the right angle. Those are called legs of the right triangle. So the legs are sides which are not opposite sides, and the hypotenuse is a side which is opposite to the right angle. Okay, let's do a proof using... Um, types of triangles. And we have two different types of triangles here. Uh, the first one is uh, JKM and the th second is OMK. And I'm given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 and angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. And I want to prove that KP, segment KP, is congruent to MP. So uh, let me mark up the diagram. I have angle 1 congruent to angle 3. And then I have angle 2 congruent to angle 4.
And then I also know that uh, Km is congruent to itself. And um, so let's see. So I have angle 1 congruent to 3, 2 congruent to 4, angle JKM congruent to OMK, because if I have congruent angles added to congruent angles, their sums are congruent. So I have this angle here and this angle here that are congruent to each other. Now I have two triangles, JKM and OMK, that are congruent by angle side angle. I have the angle 2 and 4, I have the side KM congruent to itself, and then I have the other angle, 1 plus 2 and 4 plus 3 that are congruent to each other. So by angle side angle, I have two angle or two triangles that are congruent to each other. <clears throat> now I can say that JM is congruent to KO. So JM is congruent to KO by CPCTC. I'm also given that JP, this section here, is congruent to OP. And now I can say that KP is congruent to PM because if congruent segments are subtracted from congruent segments, then their differences are congruent. <clears throat>